Welcome to the latest installment of an extraordinary recap. It is your boy, Jay Connor. And this is Alex Hardy. And this season, we're recapping every single episode of Issa Rae's Insecure. Today, we are joined by the illustrious, the incomparable, the arch enemy of white feminists everywhere, <laughs> Bitch Media Senior Editor Yvette Dion Brown. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Now, um, in the last episode, Molly tried her damnedest to ingratiate herself with her coworkers. Uh, Lawrence's love triangle of sorts was growing increasingly complex. And Issa gave into promiscuity as an antidote for getting over Lawrence. Did you have any takeaways from last episode? I had a few. One, I really don't know why Issa wants Lawrence back. Like, he really is a fuck nigga. Like, on oh, we gonna get in that. We're going to get in that in a minute. We're going to get in that in a minute. I, after that episode, I just don't <laughs> understand why she wants him back. Like, all yeah. of her gripes about him are real. He did not have a job for four years. Like, what do you see in him that I don't see? He fine. That, yeah. Yeah, he is. He ain't about to get you far. Yo, that's, that's real. Looks will get you anywhere. When's the last time you, you saw a, a beautiful homeless person? You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you always... <laughs> You always gonna have options as long as you're attractive. I saw, I saw one I saw on, the, on the on the train platform the other day, and I was considering. But you know, you were like, "Nigga, I will pay your bills. <laughs> your, I will baby. pay your telephone bills, your automobiles, and baby, we can chill." So we obviously had a lot going on tonight. But first off, let's discuss Molly and her new love interest. What do you guys think about this Molly Lionel dynamic? Shout out to Sterling K. Brown. Mm-hmm. That chocolatey vision of love. It's always yeah. good to see him working and on screen. She, yeah, I'm glad to see her at least getting out there again. Uh, I don't want her to self sabotage, like we all, you know, we all do it. But I don't want her to block her blessings and, um, you know, let a potential good thing get in the way of of a potential good thing get away from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She needs to go ahead and, and embrace and uh, let her soul glow right quick. Embrace, embrace the checklist. Embrace the checklist. What about you, Yvette? What do you think about uh, the Molly Lionel dynamic? I agree. And it's interesting to me that she talks about him having a checklist when one season ago she had that same checklist. Well, and so I think that she should just let it flow, go with this guy. He's everything she's ever said that she wanted. And now she's rejecting him, which doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like the therapy that she's going to is trying to help her heal herself so she can be open to love. And she's just, she's missing it all. I thought it was an interesting correlation that you brought up the fact that, you know, the therapy that she's going through is kind of supposed to help her with this. And then she talked about how she stopped going. I thought that was kind of interesting. You know what I'm saying? Especially after last week, it seemed like she had a breakthrough with her therapist. Like they were actually yeah. having a dialogue. She wasn't all closed up. She was talking about her issues. And now she wants to get rid of the therapist and reject the one good guy we've seen her with. Well, no, Jared was good too. But the one yeah. good guy this season that we've seen her with, like there does seem to be some relationship there. I mean, the general rule of thumb is if I ask you to go on two things and you say no twice, like I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like <laughs> over. <laughs> did that that that's it. I asked you out twice oh nigga nah you know and what i'm saying SZA. like and to a scissor concert yeah right yeah i was like that concert and that restaurant like clearly she ain't from out here because niggas doing the most if they take you to a concert and a nice ass restaurant exactly. you can get either or but if you get both that's the combo breaker you know what i'm exactly. saying she would be all over him last season she would have been all over that so i don't know yep. what's going on with her but i don't like it do you think in any way it's a correlation with what's going on with the work? Do you think like the stress at work might be playing into it? Or do you think this is strictly Molly being in her own head? I think it's a combo. I think yeah. a part of it is what's happening at work and the fact that she doesn't feel very secure at work. When last season, that was like her one safe space, like she was excelling at work. Now I feel like she feels unsafe there. And so yeah. that's a part of it. But the other part is that she's still self-sabotaging. Like that's the one thing that grates my nerves about Molly is she always sabotages herself. And I think this is just another example of that. 
Yeah. Alex? I agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she, she's she's great at self-sabotage. But yeah, it, I could easily see it being overwhelming because, you know, she's popping off at, at popping off in the office place. Like she definitely has a new level of stress as she's trying to like, you know, manifest her glow up here. So, you know, the the the, the plight of being underpaid and unappreciated in work definitely could have a, a, a place to play in it. But in general, I just think that she maybe she doesn't know what she wants. I mean, shit, she 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 stopped going to therapy. She might just be lost in the sauce trying to figure it out. And maybe she you should just need to go and embrace that whole face. Yo, and that yeah. shot that she fired at her coworker was kind of vicious. Listen, too. that that warmed my heart. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You better shank that bitch in the neck. Go ahead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To stab yeah. him. <laughs> what, was it? what was it? Somebody said real friends stab you in the front. And I front. can't remember who that was. I can't remember who it was. That uh, said that. Jadena. Yeah, yeah. It's just well, like a bunch of people know. said it, but yeah. But I think it's Jadena that we're quoting though. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, she she got his ass, you know, like what she what was it she said? Like you're always she on said, vacation. Oh, you're always your vacation. Well, I wrote that shit down. She said you're already vacation at the office, so what's the big difference? Yeah, yeah. He got said, him. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that hurt. Yeah. He said, ouch. <laughs> if I was him, I would have pulled out my paycheck and been like, Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. Get on my level. Exactly. Get on my level. All right. So next up we got Issa. Oh, who's God. on her who's on her quote unquote vocation it started off a little bumpy with johnny gill 2.0 making his guest appearance but in the end it would appear that stella got her groove back any any thoughts and opinions on that shit oh god first of all if luke james was sitting on my couch like he's sitting on her couch i don't know what his name was supposed to be because they never said his name no, like he's sitting on they were johnny, gill, johnny gill 2.0 Johnny That's Gill 2.0 is they sitting on his on couch. couch and you yeah, said, no, I can't do this. His couch. Oh, on his couch. And you're saying, yeah. no, I can't do this. And you leave. Are you saying that if, if Johnny Gill 2.0 had you on his couch, you wouldn't leave? Is that what you're insinuating? Yes. I would stay there and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. I don't understand what is happening with her. Gas is expensive out here. Yo, the gas is like three dollars a, a gallon, my you nigga. Better, you, you better know. get that nut and make it worth your trip. And depending upon what part of LA you in, it might even be more than that. Don't fuck around and run out of gas in Beverly Hills because it's gonna right. be your ass. Going deep into the valley and shit. You know what I'm saying? I've been down that road before. You'd be Ooh. like, oh nigga, how am I gonna get home? I'm gonna just put in this two dollars and just make it do what it do. I'm but, glad she's at least getting out there. Like shit. I mean, I, I've never well, yeah, she's embracing, you know, the technology that's available to us in the 2000 and the 17. And she is out here, you know, getting her some digital dick out here. So I, I, I appreciate her efforts. I just wish that, you know, she was able to put her nerves aside and sit on that nigga's face like like the culture wanted yeah. her to do. But is there a rule on fucking neighbors? That's kind of close for comfort. As long as that bitch don't show up unannounced, we good. Uh, I agree. As long as he doesn't come, because I feel like there's going to be a moment when like Lawrence is there or something's going to happen where that's just going to be hella awkward. It, I just feel like this show is about to get messy as fuck. Like you fucking yeah. neighbors, you, 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 you know what I mean? Like there's just a lot of shit going on. And I mean, obviously it's supposed to get more and more complex, but I'm just feeling like we're going from complex to like teetering into just being like messy as shit. Cause like I, me personally, I don't believe in fucking neighbors. Cause like y'all said, there's a code about calling before you come. And when they see like, oh, I saw her light come on. Well, shit, I'm yep. going to go over there. It, you know what and I mean? It's like when a nigga see your light come on, that's like the bat signal. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit, it's time to roll. And he going to be able to see her whole shit. He's going to be able to observe her whole face. Like yeah. <laughs> from across the way. Like, Most oh, who this nigga? Who's that? Oh, mind your business. You box head ass. Yeah. Like, no, it's <laughs> not. It, 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 it can't always be a good thing. That's the be that's the biggest part though. It's like like you said, he gets to see her whole face. So it's like you know, oh well, I'm not fucking with her because she's doing all this shit, or you know, he's gonna throw that back in her face. Like, oh, but you had your legs up for you know Johnny Gill 2.0 last night. How are you gonna be worrying about what the fuck I'm doing? Like, it's you don't fuck neighbors. Yo, don't but, fuck neighbors. Plus, it makes neighborhood watch messy. You know what I'm saying? They might let somebody break. <laughs> they might let somebody break into your shit, and like, you know what I'm saying, out of spite. Like, nigga, I know you saw it. You live right you by the entrance. It you know what I'm saying? Too, but I also don't think Issa would care. Like, I don't think the sex was good enough that it would make her even think twice about having another man over. I honestly don't think she cares. She even took her no. charger when she left. Like, that's yeah, how much no. she didn't care. She was like, fuck that shit. I love I loved that when she said, I like to respectfully decline. Like, that. <laughs> that's what you got to do when you don't, you know, that's her having agency over her yeah. body and <laughs> declining to be titty fucked. That was all awkward. It, it was like she had never had sex before in her life. Like the whole thing was just, 
I cringed through that whole sex scene. Like every other sex scene has been so natural and it flowed well. And that was just awkward as fuck. But why is Lawrence getting that grade A, you know, super box and Issa's love life? I don't think Issa's got one good, like, no. fuck session. Even Daniel. Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Daniel? Oh, Daniel did put it down. Daniel was good. Ass. And he needs to come back. It is time. <laughs> I don't know where Alex he's man. been. I don't know why <laughs> Issa hasn't called him. Like, I would be calling Daniel every day. Or at least every other day for a dick appointment. Like, she never calls him. And I don't understand why. He was an itch. Because she, like... Yeah. She like TV dinner. She don't. She don't want that gourmet. She don't want that. You know what I'm saying? That salmon croquette. I, just, I want her to have like a proper. Like she just. You know, uh, getting these like uh, she need, she jump off style say. fuck. I want her to have a proper <laughs> experience in a bed with some candles yeah. and not on a couch in a car on a. You know, just like let her have the whole moment. Then uh, Lauren shouldn't be the only one getting it, getting it in properly out here. Has Issa had a sex scene that lasted longer than three seconds yet? That was like legit. Or has it all been awkward fucks that have They've been super been short? She be like, having yeah, they all kind of seem kind of accidental and kind of like haphazard. Yeah. Like <laughs> she's yeah. not, she's not. I need her to, uh, yeah, her experiences to to. Uh, she out here improve. having high school sex. Pretty she right, really so. is. She really is having high school sex. Like it's awkward. It's quick. I've never seen her have an orgasm. Well, maybe with Daniel. Do y'all really need org? No, nah, let me die. Let me die. Nope, I'm, nope, just nope, I'm just nope, nope, playing. I'm just playing. Listen to this joke. Nope, uh-huh. nope. He's kidding. He's kidding. He's just kidding. Y'all. <laughs> He's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me shot up in this motherfucker. Right. We are. Yeah. We can't. We can't uh, stand that backlash. No. Mm-mm, no. They could be like that nigga said what? All right. So about the vibrator scene. Now, clearly, oh, Alex and I are woefully inexperienced in this situation, but mm-hmm. Yvette, maybe this is something that you can expound upon us without us prying into your personal life, but... Oh, you can pry. I don't mind. So, have you ever had a situation in which you ran out of batteries and you was in this bitch breaking open, like, smoke detectors and remote controls and, like, refrigerators and shit? I have definitely had that experience. So much so that now I keep a little drawer of batteries. It's just all different sizes of batteries for everything. Because Nigga, how many vibrators do you have? Enough. You got different size batteries. (laughs) (laughs) I have enough, but... Sometimes you need that 9 volt. Exactly. Exactly. So I've been there, but I also feel like Issa hasn't used the vibrator in so long that the batteries are just dead. Ooh. It's it's not out of overuse. It's because she doesn't use it at all. Yeah. Which also Mm. troubled me. Like, what are you... Like, Issa, what are you doing? Yeah. Do you not yeah. masturbate? Like, but what's she going on? Cover up, like, up to her neck on some, like, 1950 sitcom <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you saw the outfit she wore when she went out looking like somebody from a fucking 1980s guy video. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like she's completely, like, I don't get it. I don't understand her at all. It's only, she, I, okay, five years is a long time, but not really. Like, you've lost all swag. You've lost everything. How? Yeah, she rolled up looking like J.J. Fad, and I had questions. That's all I know. <laughs> Last but not least, shall we get to the main event? Mm, no. We have uh, Tasha and Lawrence. Oh, boy. Now, uh, Tasha invited Lawrence to her family's picnic, and he bailed out to go kick it with his coworkers. And Tasha, obviously offended, called him to find out what happened, and Lawrence revealed that he doesn't want anything serious with her. And as far as what happens from there, I will let Yvette tell everybody what happened. Oh, it was amazing. So Tasha basically said that he is a good guy or he thinks he's a good guy, but he's really a fuck nigga, which is what everybody across America who's not a part of the Lawrence Hive has been thinking. Lawrence is the worst type of man to me. Mm. Because he wants to be a good guy and he purports himself to be a good guy, but that also keeps him from being honest with himself and with the people that he's dating and talking to. So mm. he so he's afraid of hurting people's feelings. He doesn't really want to, you know, overstep the boundary with Tasha. And at the same time, he hasn't set up any boundaries because he thinks he can just let it flow. He's just Yo. everything about him is terrible to me. Yo, Lawrence can get on face. Lawrence gonna get a lot of niggas in trouble, yo. <laughs> yo already though, the Lawrence Hive was online Ooh. like, damn, Lawrence, not like that. Like, <laughs> they were like, not like this. Lawrence is fucking it up for the for the for Lawrence, the uh, for the Lawrence, head out here. 
Lawrence is gonna get a lot of niggas in trouble. Like there's a there's a lot of women watching that shit right now going, damn, this nigga I'm fucking with is Lawrence. Like Lawrence is Lawrence fucked the game up for a lot of people. Cause it's one thing when like you see this character and you're like, damn, that's foul, but for it to manifest in the way it did and it was just so like authentic to people's experiences as far as like dating goes. Lawrence fucked it up for a lot. Like this this day will go down in infamy as the day that like niggas dating shifted in LA specifically and in the rest of the world in general. Cause it's just like, yo, like Lawrence fucked it up for a lot of mm-hmm. niggas out here. Also, I don't think that uh I don't know like what uh like how she introduced Tasha as far as like to Lawrence to her family, you know, like what were the the circumstances, but I see a lot of people debating whether or not he should have even invited his ass to the family barbecue in the first place on some yeah. bullshit. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Especially, especially for her to be like, I knew what it was and I knew it was just a situation. And then it's like, well, nigga, Set why you, it, you can't bring somebody. It, this is a conversation I had with my dad. This nigga brought this woman around for Thanksgiving and we're thinking, oh, because you brought this woman around for Thanksgiving, we're thinking it's a certain situation. But he's like, well, no, it's not. And we're like, yo, you can't set that precedent because us being your family, Thanksgiving is kind of a big fucking deal. Yeah, it's not just Sunday dinner. So it's just like even for her to bring him around her family, that is a certain, uh, uh, you know what I mean? That sets a certain connotation. So it's like if she's sitting there talking about, because I mean, this this is what Lawrence Hive's rebuttal can be. And I am not, for those listening at home, I am not Lawrence Hive. You better clarify. So, so don't come for me. But Lawrence <laughs> Hive's rebuttal can be, okay, she talking about he's carrying himself a certain way, but he's really this person. If she knew what it was, why is she bringing this nigga around her family? They're both well, assholes. They well, are. Yvette, actually, Yvette, let's hear your opinion on what I just said. I still blame all that on Lawrence because he's had plenty of opportunities throughout the course of their situationship to let her know what it is. And he keeps backtracking on that. So after he told her that he slept with Issa and he showed up at her house with the begging nigga routine, like, I'm sorry. And, you know, I should have told you and whatever and whatever. That was his opportunity to set a boundary. Like, that's when he should have told her, like, I'm not looking for anything serious, but I really like you. And no, I'm not going to this damn barbecue. But again, he wants to put off that he's a nice guy and that, you know, he's the good guy that got cheated on and he's heartbroken and he needs somebody to mend his heart. When in actuality, he's not telling Issa's side of the story either. Like, you didn't work for four years. I cannot get over that. You did not work for four years. And when Issa's coming home after working, the house is dirty. There's no dinner cooked. Like, you're not pulling your part of the weight in the relationship at all. But he never tells Tasha that. Yvette, you act like... You act like you ain't never dated a nigga didn't have a job for four years. You get you need I to get off your never. high horse. Look, you need to get off your never. high horse. That's that's a basic requirement. You at least have to work. Like he was on. working on sitting on that couch. Like why are you being judgmental? He he sat on the couch so much they had to get a new one. Like, that's, that's real. A, that's a shame. That is a damn. Shame. <laughs> That is beyond pale for me that you sat on the couch so long and laid on it so much playing video games that we had to buy a new couch. (laughs) But he doesn't tell Tasha any of those things. He doesn't set any boundaries. He doesn't communicate effectively. And to me, it's all on him. Like, yes, Tasha should go in um, more aware of knowing that she's a rebound because she is a rebound. But it's up to Lawrence to also set those boundaries and to say, I don't think it's appropriate for me to be going to your barbecue because we're not serious. I think they were both just kind of going along. If it, it felt good, you know, after she took him back, he did his big and nigga shit. They was in there, you know, playing house. It felt nice. You know, they have some companionship. Lawrence got somewhere to sleep until his move in date. And, you know, everybody was winning. But yeah, they both should have been clear about the boundaries because he's here kissing her all in front of the family. And, you know, same thing. They both, I think they both based some partner, but Lawrence definitely should have. Uh, been clear about like what this is and what it's not. Yo, when he was like walking the grandma out, I was like, oh, this nigga. Th- 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 like he in the family now. You doing too much, family. He really you, did he a lot. Too much. He really did a lot. But do you actually think he has an apartment? Do you think like he went through with that and like signed the lease and like paid the deposit? Because I don't believe it. No, because mm-hmm. Molly's a, because <laughs> Molly's a liar. Because he didn't. He never said that he did. Molly lied. Hashtag <laughs> Molly lied. Yeah. Molly lied. He never said we never 
Yeah, we never heard him say that. So until proven otherwise, I need receipts. Until we actually hear him say that, Molly lied. Hashtag Molly lied. I would not be surprised. Molly does a lot of terrible shit. So before, so you, so, so Yvette, did you feel like, then this is probably a stupid ass question, but did you, before tonight, did you feel like Lawrence was a fuck boy? Yes. Okay. I felt like Lawrence was a fuck boy. My issue with Issa is that Issa never said it the way Tasha did. Like Issa kind of skirted around the issue for what, I don't even know why. Like, why are you trying to spare this nigga's feelings? I don't know. But she never came out and said, exactly how she was feeling she always would say it and then run out of the door or cheat on him with with daniel but she never came out and said like you are the problem so it's I just, to make her the villain because she never spoke up i think that that's what's the, the interesting dynamic in this show is that like the first season everybody's like oh Issa, you ain't shit like i was foul mm-hmm. you, you, you cheat on but now like the second season it's kind of like you're kind of rooting for Issa, even though well, she was in even though she was in the wrong, Lawrence is not doing himself no favors. And plus, there was a part of me that almost felt like he was about to have like a love square, a love rectangle, because I thought low key he was going to try to throw it at Brooke too. Oh, that would be interesting if he did. I was if like, nigga, did. don't do it. Don't do it. Hmm. But again, like, I don't understand why Issa is still attached to him. I just don't see it. Like, I understand. Because he's got that bomb. Because he got that, bomb. Like, he got that they bomb. They weren't even having sex. He got that bomb that he saved for Tasha. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> they didn't even have sex. I can't remember them having sex more than once the whole first season. Well, he did do that fucking flea. Uh, what was it? The first episode. Yeah. He gave her six good pumps. <laughs> and then ran out the door. Pumps and, and a bump. Like he was, was like, I gotta grandma. go. Like, ugh. He gave her that, yeah, that Christian head kiss. And then mm-hmm. left. And now she can't get a hold of him. So, like, everything about Lawrence is fucked up. And I don't know why men, excluding y'all, are rooting for him. I just don't feel <laughs> for him. Thank you I, for that clarification. Don't have niggas <laughs> on my head. I don't see it for him. Like, I want I, him to end the season alone. Just so we're clear, I'm Team Tasha, y'all. For y'all, y'all listening at home, go Team what? Tasha. You know why what I'm saying? Team Tasha? Because that's the safest one, and I don't want niggas coming for me. That's why. Oh, God. You better root for the underdog. <laughs> I can't root for a cheater. Anyway, um, so next episode, what are we expecting? Mm. I expect Molly to dump Lionel to like end it because of self sabotage. Um, does she? But does she seem like the type of person that's just gonna like be definitive about it or just like avoid it? Just you know, oh, this isn't gonna work out. Something, something non, you know, to not hurt his feelings. Yeah. Um, and and just kind of it'll dissolve. And uh, Lawrence is probably going to fuck somebody from that party and try to fuck Tasha again. Yeah. And Issa is probably going to have some more awkward sex. You know what, though? Um, it is early in the season for this 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 arc to be. It, it, it's too early in the season for this arc to be over with Tasha. So we clearly this isn't the end with him and Tasha. We still got four, four or five more episodes left this season. That's it. No, yeah, it's like only six. Or, oh, okay. How many is it's it? Only, it's only eight episodes. Oh, oh. Again. again, again. Oh, HBO. They fucking up. Uh, Yvette, what do you think is going to happen in this next episode? I am really rooting for Daniel to come back. I hope that he shows up and blows <laughs> Ethan's back out. And I hope she forgets Lawrence and moves on with Daniel or tries to salvage something with him. I also hope that she like find somebody who can pleasure her because all of the men that she's sleeping with are just, they're giving her six pumps and leaving and like kissing her like a grandma. Like all of it has just been bad. So I hope the next episode she finds a dude who really knows how to pleasure her and that she speaks up for that and advocates for that. Hypothetically speaking, Yvette, let's say that Danielle comes, Daniel comes, Daniel, Daniel comes back. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, she's like, you know what? Things didn't work out with Lawrence. And and Daniel, you know, gives it 100%. And she's like, you know what? Maybe this is the move. Maybe I need to, you know, uh, um, pivot to Daniel. Would you, would you, you would approve of that? To a degree, because I don't think Daniel is that great either. Because Daniel, from what I understand from the first season, did not want to commit to her. 
And that's what it seems like. That's what Issa wants. Like Issa wants to. She says she wants to have a whole phase, but at the end of that whole phase, she wants to be partnered with somebody. And I just don't think well, Daniel is that person. But I don't even think she wants to have the whole phase. I think it's just a a matter of her being lonely and just trying to find a way to get over it's coping. Lawrence, yeah, yeah it's a coping that's mechanism. A good point. That's a good. You know point. what I'm saying? So if anything, like she should have two or three or four or 20 more sex tries with Daniel yeah, and then move on. But I don't think that she needs to like develop feelings for him and start dating him because that would be disastrous too. Mm. All right. So what is you got any, any memorable, blah, 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 blah. any memorable quotes? Can you teach me the hoe? Oh yes. I need that on a shirt. Me too. Like I felt that in my heart. <laughs> immediately <laughs> that's such some real ass shit to ask like girl that's like that's a real friend can you teach me how to hold that's vulnerability that's like agency that's being sex positive like it's just all the wonderful things and who who doesn't need a little hoe coaching every now and then and i love that molly was immediately like yes yes like, oh, <laughs> that's a real friend yeah she said okay oh, she said nigga can i you oh. know what i'm saying mm. all right well friend. that wraps up our recap of insecure thank you again yvette for coming through if you guys aren't already up on bitch media i highly suggest you guys check it out because i'm sure yvette is gonna have a dope ass banging ass op-ed about this whole uh episode (laughs) uh shit from her perspective but thank you for coming through yvette um for people that are wanting to get more information on you and everything you got going on how can they find you uh my website is yvettedion.com um, and I'm on all social platforms as Free Black Girl. That's yes. like the greatest <laughs> social media handle ever. Thank you. I be trying. Way better than Fuck Tyler. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just <laughs> oh, way God. better. Oh God. Uh, um, Alex, you got any any final thoughts or anything else you want to say to the lovely people at home? Uh, I would like for Daniel to return and for Issa to sit on his face. Mm-hmm. This nigga. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all for listening. Hope you enjoyed our recap. And make sure you catch the next one, which will feature our. Uh, we're not going to tell y'all yet, but we're in for a treat. So thanks again. Peace out, y'all. Peace.